Hi, I'm Tony Russo, and this is In Case You Missed It from Kate's Boylston for the week ending Friday, August 30th, 2024. Just a quick note, if you are watching on video, I'm recording at night and uh, I'm a little dark. It's okay. There are two um, separate stories that aren't really related, but make a larger point that I want to open up with this week. Uh, The first one is headlined if you go to Funeral Service Insider, um, the website (laughs) at katesboylson.com. The headline is Funeral Home Dies in Canadian Town. And the funeral director, he has a French name that's difficult to pronounce. I'm going to take a crack at it. It is Gilio, Gilino, um, Normand is his first name. And um, he's the funeral director and manager of Fawcett Funeral Home in Geraldton, Ontario. And Geraldton is in the Great White North. It's not far from Thunder Bay. And he has just decided to give up. Um, He's been trying to sell the funeral home for the last three years. He's had no takers. So he's closing up shop and moving elsewhere. But what's really interesting about it is there is a nearby funeral home, um, Everest Chapel. Everest Funeral Chapel will pick up the slack. Um, That is, they will go and get people who have died and and provide and provide service for them but they are not buying his business instead they're renting a garage that is owned by the funeral home where they can stow some four-wheel drive vehicles so they can get in and out um as necessary in inclement <laughs> weather up there um, this is a former mine. I'm sorry, a former, former forestry town. They came in and they harvested the trees. And about 15 years ago, the uh, the forestry business shut down and they lost 450 jobs and everyone left. M- earlier this year, a gold mine opened, and the hope was that the gold mine would attract um, younger people to come up and to work at the gold mine, gold mine, and to work at the uh, funeral home, and they lost three businesses this week. The other one was uh, a beer store, which is their, you know, uh, which is kind of a national chain in, in Canada, if you're not familiar, and a um, auto repair shop, all closed because no one is coming back to this town. And we see this a lot in rural um, funeral homes. We have seen this several times recently in rural funeral homes, and it feels as if things are getting too tight and one wonders you know what what is going to be the the final end of this um so we'll we'll keep it we'll keep a track on this story but the other thing that is interesting is that more recently spring valley funeral home in um new albany indiana was recently shuttered by the state for having unsafe conditions um, among the things in a recent ex- inspection were the sm- a strong smell of decomposition in the embalming room an unembalmed um, decedent who had died on june 17th but remained unembalmed as of the inspection on june 28th and other various signals that this funeral home was closing down on its own um, and just not telling anyone. And this is where I think it is a little bit connected to the Canadian story in that, you know, we, we report again and again of, about people who have just run out of time and money and don't have the decency to admit it. You know, at least in, <laughs> at least in Canada, the, the owner decided to shut his business down Um, and leave the community without a funeral home, but at least he didn't continue to try to make a go of something by cutting corners or just because things were beyond his ability to, um, to cope. And this is something that is a worry to me, um, as someone who covers this industry, because 
it feels like chips and cracks. It looks a lot like chips and cracks among these small funeral homes. I believe I mentioned it a couple weeks ago. You know, uh, a fraud here, a little dipping into the pre-need there. And the next thing you know, it it wouldn't shock me if this was the beginning of a kind of crisis in small funeral homes. And, you know, this is a drum that I've started beating more and more loudly as I've started covering these kind of things in Funeral Service Insider. And that is you need to know where your business is now. You you can't just think about, you know, you can't just know what your business is worth. You have to find out. And succession planning is at least worth considering. Like what would my business be worth today if I just decided to give up and go home? Um, There is a way out if you are having trouble. There are all of these um, loan programs and things as we reported on the uh, homesteaders recently made a deal with a bank whose name has slipped my mind. Um, to provide, you know, loans to small funeral homes that wouldn't be available from from actual banks. And this is just if you're if you're not sure what your business is worth for a fact, like on paper, it's time to find out because these closings make everyone look bad. And they don't just make everyone look bad. They undermine all the work that's been done by these places. These are places that, you know, earn the community's trust and then just abandoned it. And it looks bad for the life work of the funeral home owners. And it just looks bad for the industry as well. So beating the drum once again with some bad news at the top, find out what your business is worth, find out where you're gonna be in five years, find it out in writing and have a plan for where you will be when you are ready to stop being a funeral director. Maine, as you may have heard, became the ninth state to have natural organic reduction legalized without any natural organic reduction companies to provide the service in the state. If you are counting places and you think it's 12, yes, there are 12 places where it's legal. There are three places where it's possible. Those places are Colorado, Nevada, and Washington. Um, we've, we did a story, it's got to be almost a year ago, about how frustrated the Oregon um, representative who shepherded that bill through was that it was still not available in the state. And it's great press for politicians, and it really gets people who are environmentally interested kind of energized about, you know, green burial, but no one's doing this. And I'm not saying no one ever will. I am saying it is really expensive and it takes a lot of juice to get it up and running. And, you know, the people who are doing it are doing it well. Um, The people who are doing it are successful at it, but it takes a long time and it takes deep pockets. It's not like, for instance, acclimation, where you can buy a machine and have it up and running the next day, you know, after some training. Um, This is an entire building, essentially, that you need to just get started. And I'm going to put a link in the show notes to the story that I did. I spoke with Tina Spade about the uh, about the process, and she was very open um, she was the first person to to own a to to run a to own and run a natural organic reduction facility, and hers is in Washington, and they're very successful, and they get people from from all over the country who go there to have their loved ones' remains taken care of. But you know, she she herself was saying that it is a expensive proposition. This is not something where you can buy two or three. Um, pods to put people in. You're going to need 10 and you're going to need to do, you know, 40 or 50 of these at minimum um, a year. And if you're not doing that, then you're going to go broke trying. Um, I did hear uh, a rumor that she was working with uh, some places in New York to maybe license her um, 
her proprietary methods to be used there. So, you know, maybe New York in the near future opens the fourth one. I don't know that for sure. But what I do know for, for sure is the upside, if there is an upside of this mad rush to make natural organic reduction legal, is at least we're talking about funeral service somehow. When it is in the ether and people are talking about making their final arrangements, it is an opportunity to say, well, there are green burials and there are green methods that we can use. And if you are interested in what's going to happen to your body when you die, this is a good time to start talking about it. This is a good time to start planning for it. So the publicity, I think, is good for everyone in the industry. But I just I just feel like I'm ticking off people who are saying that, you know, it, sure, if, you know, the, this this if we build it, they will come um, attitude seems to not be paying off. And again, there are 12 states where it's legal. There are three states where it's happening. And that is over the last three years um, when um, when I started covering the um, the funeral industry, there were six or seven states and it was only possible in two. In the last three years, only Nevada has added a company and the company that was added in Nevada was Earth Funeral, which had been pay- preparing to move into Nevada and waiting to get the um, the legislation passed. And I'm, I'm glad that they're in and I'm glad that they're open, but that's what it takes. It takes a company that's going to go into the state and open a natural organic reduction facility to kind of spearhead this. And a lot of times they talk about a, you know, a, a grassroots movement. It doesn't matter. Um, it doesn't matter if you pass a law saying that, you know, you can open a spaceport in our town. That doesn't mean people are going to start opening spaceports. So congratulations to Maine. I hope someone opens there really soon. I I would love it if Maine became the fourth state to offer natural organic reduction instead of the uh, ninth state to legalize it and not offer it. Uh, A funeral home in New York has been has settled actually a suit from the state for more than $700,000 in restitutions and civil penalties um, after being sued for allegedly exploiting grieving families, officials announced on August 26th. Um, The R.G. Ortiz Funeral Home has eight locations in the Bronx, Brooklyn, and Manhattan, and it settled with the city after about a four months, I guess in April was when the news broke that they were being sued. And the settlement is interesting because the complaints are, I don't want to undermine the complaints and I don't want to downplay the complaints, but the complaints have to do with how quickly they were, the families were getting their remains back and how open the uh, Ortiz funeral home was with their uh, with their pricing for cremation and for and for other services it's interesting that this isn't federal and which you know new york is one of those states that tends to have very you know very more strict i guess that is that that tends to be more strict regulatorily um so that that could have something to do with with it and all of the reporting has been very oblique on it. I mean, the the complaints are that um, the charge for, for instance, hair and makeup was too high or that the hair and makeup wasn't done or wasn't done well. Um, there are other, you know, not getting back remains for months rather than in weeks. And these are, these are service complaints, but it's worth keeping an eye on the kind of things that Um, that regulators are going to respond to. (laughs) I mean, you know, we have the one funeral home we mentioned in the beginning in Indiana where, you know, he stopped embalming people and that got the state involved. New York didn't wait quite that long um, when the uh, when the complaints got to a certain boiling point, the step the state stepped in. I believe there were 80, um, 80 complaints between 2019 and when they decided to do the investigation, which was late last year. Um, You can find the link to the story in the show notes, and you can take a look at some of 
the instances and the scope of the complaint. But mostly this is about if you're open and you're transparent, then you're going to be in good shape. And if you're not, then you're re then you're kind of rolling the dice. So that, that's I mean, that's really the theme here, isn't it? It's the, it's the theme of this show. And I didn't even mean it to be. And finally, I just want to invite you to visit uh, katesboylston.com and you can click in the show notes to get to the In Case You Missed It section of the website where all the stories are free. They're not behind the paywall. You can see them without even having to provide your email address, I believe. But uh, we've started running uh, funeral home uh, owner, or actually, I'm sorry, funeral director obituaries as just part of a service. You know, maybe it's someone you went to school with. It's some place where you can see, you know, which which funeral directors have passed on and how their communities have responded. And it's always interesting to read uh, a funeral director's obituary. It's almost kind of a uh, sometimes the, uh, the 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 shoemaker's children are barefoot, and sometimes there was clearly preparation put behind. Uh, behind the writing and we don't run the full thing we we run really just at the risk of sounding like we're stealing from legacy we run the death notice and a couple of details and we link directly to the full obituary which is almost always at the funeral home where that funeral director had spent the better part of their career and and it's it's nice to see it in there you know this week there are, are several um funeral directors who clearly made a significant effect on their town and uh, or their community and um and we're celebrated for it so it's it's nice to see i mean it's always it's it's never nice to see that someone is dead but it's nice to see that they're well remembered and well regarded still so that's something that you can find link in the show notes um, and that will do it for this week. In case you missed, it is a Kate's Boylston production. It was written, edited, and videoed by me, Tony Russo. Uh, make sure you follow us wherever you're listening now. If you're listening on the podcast, please follow on Spotify, Apple, Amazon, Overcast. You name it. If 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 it gets podcasts, it gets us. Um, but also, I got to say, check out the YouTube uh, channel. We've been putting things from behind the paywall in front of the paywall and up on YouTube, including many of our most popular webinar series. Um, we had this great one on the funeral rule that I just put up a couple weeks ago, and that's starting to get a little traction. So you may want to pop in and see you know, some of the, some of the funeral rule hedges that are being suggested. I cannot believe that news hasn't broken yet. I think I think I may have jinxed myself by saying it. Um, but that will do it for this week um, on uh, Funeral Service Insider. 